Robin Sonic back with you. The music podcast, the Canadian music podcast specifically. Um, this is our YouTube debut. So, uh, so for anyone listening to us on YouTube or watching us on YouTube, uh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us in this new uh, escapade, this new endeavor. Um, and for those of you still listening on podcast services, welcome back. Happy to be back in your ear tubes. As always, uh, joined by my co-host, um, H. Dizzle, Hunter Hamilton. What's good, Hunter? Yo, how's it going, everyone? Yo, yo, yo. Um, UFJ, uh, Jake Sweezy. How's it going, Jake? Yo, yo, yo. Hailing to you from London. What's good? <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're England. not. England? <laughs> no, we're not coming here from London. Yeah, mate. Uh, we're and, international. Uh, I'm Lee. Um, right. We're very national. We're we're in Canada. So uh, <laughs> welcome to everyone watching in Canada and, and to people watching uh, not in Canada. In the UK. Yo, what's good? I know we have a big, 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 big following in Germany. Huge following in Germany. The homies so, uh, in Germany following yeah. us. Yo, what's up, guys? Guten I'm, Tag. I'm sure you guys. I'm sure you guys in Germany are just absolutely thrilled to have <laughs> faces now yes. attached to the names. Identify the, the voice to the been, face. Yeah, that you've been absolutely just eating up, consuming all of our content, uh, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, so for if you're new to Servant Sonic. We're, as I said, a Canadian music podcast. What we like to do is review albums, both new and old uh, albums that are important to us. Um, and uh, yeah, we try to keep keep content a little bit Canadian as well, because Canada just has so much good mu- music and awesome musicians that it's uh, important to highlight. So um, that's what we're all about. And we're happy that you're along for the ride. And guys, this is a, a good time to... to I guess, uh, ask over the last month, I know we haven't really recorded a full episode in a month or so over the last month. Do you think that there's been something really Canadian about anything that's kind of occurred in your life? Like have you, have you had a super Canadian experience in the last 30 days or so that you're like, wow, but this, this right here, this right here is extra Canadian. Um, no. A beer on a cold day, not on a yeah. hot day, but it's getting it's getting chilly now. It's getting quite darker earlier in the day. Um, not an excuse to drink, but you know, since we're Canadian, uh, having a beer, like you know, maybe at like four o'clock uh, when it's on yeah. a weekday. I oh, don't I've, know I've, something I've like I've that. I've got one. I can't really say there's any more. Yeah, mm. go ahead. I've got one. When the uh, I saw on uh, uh, social media the Trans Mountain Pipeline was partially destroyed by flooding in BC. Mm. So nice. Canadian. Nice. That's pretty yeah. Canadian. Yeah. That's a very Canadian headline. Very you Canadian. Know? Very Canadian. Yeah. Just pumping in Canadian Canadian content there. Um, yeah. I guess the question is, what makes something Canadian? Because, yeah. like, I wrote, I ride the TTC every week. That's Canadian as shit. You know? Yeah, famous so, Canadian institution, the TTC. I ride yeah, the, the... everyone loves the TTC. I ride the LRT <laughs> in Calgary, which is... Right. Yeah, and LRTs are increasingly Canadian as shit, too. Yeah. Those are everywhere now. Is the yeah. GO, the GO train, going back and forth between places in That's Ontario? Canadian. That's pretty Canadian. That's real yeah. Canadian. Yeah. The budget yeah. train, as it were. Yeah, well, you want to know what else is Canadian, guys? And and thanks so, so much for sharing those Canadian experiences you have, uh, you've had. But uh, Kate Trinata, Kate Trinata is very Canadian. And uh, that's who's leading off our our show this week. Wow. Is Montreal's Kate Trinata. Now, yeah, I know. Very, very exciting stuff. It's, It's actually a surprise to me. I mean, we've done 20 episodes roughly already. And Kate Trinata has not played on any of our episodes yet which wait that's not for true. me is really surprising because i i thought by now that 100 percent true what? by now i thought i would have played kate Trinata because i'm i'm so obsessed yeah but no, this that's is not his the first case. time yeah 
Yeah, this is his first time on the That's show. Shocking. So, that is shocking. Um, so yeah, Kate Trinata and we we're we're really lucky because Kate Trinata blessed us uh, this Friday um, on the nineteenth uh, with new music, a, a new EP called Intimidated. I guess it's technically a single, but it's three new tracks. So might as well call it an EP, um, which is really exciting. So uh, before we get into any of that. Let's uh, check out the first song off of the EP, which is called Intimidated, featuring Her by Kay Trinata. All right, let's go. stuff um Woo, yeah really so Kate Trinata I oh I'm not sure if there is an artist right now I get more excited for a release than I do Kate Trinata like it's one of those things that like I, you know like I'll wait up till like midnight to be able to play yeah because I just can't wait to like wake up and listen to it the next day what I was the first those, discovery yeah. how did you how did you encounter or both of you encounter Kate Trinata well, for me, it was well, through... What was, your, what was yours, Jake? It, it was through Lee, and it's part of the reason I'm so shocked um, that we haven't mm-hmm. featured Kate Trinata on the show before, because I have, like, many memories of long, really long conversations with Lee about how good Kate Trinata is, and him <laughs> just refusing to stop. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, what? That I mean, wasn't... Sure for you. You were, you were speaking for a short amount of time. Well, for me, it was, but I, I don't know if I spoke. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, so I, yeah, I'm shocked yeah. that that wasn't a Servant Sonic episode because I just must, you know, I would have been sitting there for at least an hour. And Might a half. as well have been. Yeah. Yeah. So right. Yeah. So for me, it yeah, was through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think like. Yeah, I think Kate Tranana for me. Uh, when I fully became like super aware of Kate Tranana was was ninety nine, which okay. was his first his first album. Oh, not nineteen ninety nine album, but uh, no, 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 ninety nine point nine nine percent is his first studio album. Right, and uh, but he's had he's had a lot of stuff prior to that. He uh, like had a bunch of remixes that were on SoundCloud, and that's really how he kind of rose to fame. Was a bunch of these SoundCloud remixes, and he had a really famous Boiler Room um, mm. live set in Montreal, which is still to this day one of the funniest videos you can watch online there's just so many outrageous characters during the boiler room um performance that like appear beside him and like dance while he's djing and there's so many hilarious moments where like k tronada looks up at them and it's just kind of like what are you doing like who is this person beside me like they're it's very very funny go watch it if you haven't yet um but he kind of plays a lot of uh his earlier remixes and stuff under the k tronada name and before that he was actually known as Katra Domus, which he had cool. remixes under that name. And uh, he was in a, in a band with his brother, who is rapper Lou Phelps, uh, and they were known as the Celestics. So um, so he's had he's had a, like kind of like a couple of phases of his career. Um, the, the one that has seen the most success, though, being K. Trinata. So, yes, very much love K. Trinata, like just love so much that he's from Canada as well and like. I just have like so much pride for him and what he's brought to, to music over the last several years. Uh, and Intimidated, this new EP, uh, is also a very awesome project. So let's get into it. So as, as I said, released Friday, November 19th, uh, self-released, um, which is cool. Three songs. Features include Her, which was just on uh, the song that we just listened to. Um, she's California-based R&B singer. Um, the next song on the album features Thundercat, which uh, I'm sure you know who Thundercat is, listeners. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, Thundercat also has has had a pretty cool career trajectory. Originally started as a bassist for the punk group Suicidal Tendencies, for like played with them for like ten years, and then now has Holy. become like this R and B neo soul like yacht rock falsetto god. Um, that. Uh, the, yeah, we, we I, I guess we kind of covered um, most recently in our uh, Bite Size Breakdown because uh, he was a part of that Silk Sonic uh, record as well. And then um, Mock Hami, who's, uh, for you hip-hop fans out there, is quickly becoming um, one of the most interesting uh, names in hip-hop right now, signed to Griselda Records, Griselda also one of the most exciting labels in hip-hop right now, but um, based out of Buffalo and just uh, has got a, a lot of really cool acts coming out of there, Mach Hami being one of those. And uh, the cool thing about Mach Hami is that he's uh, also got Haitian roots, similar to K. Trinata. So um, they have like a, a connection there, and that comes out uh, a little bit later in the song that we're going to be playing there. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, so that's that's the other people that are on this album. Um, and with Kate Trinata, you know, being a producer, that's usually the, usually the situation is he has a lot of like cool featured artists, and um, this I intimidated being like the next stage in that. Ni ninety nine point nine nine percent had a lot of awesome features. Bubba, which was the album after that, had a lot of cool features, but like getting a little bit more high profile. And now with Intimidated, I think we're seeing him work with uh, the most high profile artists on his own work that we've we've ever seen especially in thundercat being being on there so so yeah that's that uh this is katra's first multi-song project since 2019's bubba um which bubba won the grammy for uh best dance album so uh we're coming off a pretty successful some heat for Kei coming Trinata off here. some heat um yeah, a little bit of heat. Bit of fire, heat. A little spice. A bit of a heat check. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. some spice. You got it. And uh, and he did have a single earlier in the year um, that was named Caution, 
which is really good as well. But it's just an instrumental, so there's no like vocals or anything like that on it. Um, but he has had a lot of, a lot of production credits throughout the year as well. So uh, that's with like Tinashe and Joyce Rice and like Mick Jenkins are some of the names he's uh, produced for this year. So he's he's been busy while not having a full album out, sort of thing. Um. So t- let's talk about the album itself and the break breakdown of the album. So for me, um, one of the things I really like about Kate Trinata is he's clearly in that like house slash like dance kind of genre. Of course, he likes to meld a lot of different genres. We've got R&B, we've got neo soul, we've got hip hop. You know, there's a lot of different kind of like influences that come in and out of the albums and, and songs that he's uh, put out. But he, where he hangs in the BPM and the beats per minute always tends to be around 110. Like, of course, there's exceptions of this. There's faster songs, there's lower, slower songs. But that 110, like, really creates, like, that bounce that, like, yeah, Kate yeah, Trinata yeah, yeah. is kind of, like, Pretty known for, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Very, very much a thing that he's known for. And house music, generally speaking, is a lot faster than that. It's kind of like a minimum of 120, hanging around 130, 140, generally. So to have this kind of like house adjacent artist who's like sweet spot is kind of 110, yet it feels like just as danceable as any like old house track Mm. is kind of cool. Um, But it also lends the music to be a little bit more like uh, lyric friendly and like chorus and verse friendly, uh, which is where kind of like the the hip hop and R&B influences and intertangling intertwining can can kind of come into play nice. and that's no different with with intimidated everything kind of hangs around that 110 so i think the slowest we got on the cp is 106 fastest is 112 so it's like wow. you know all within a six beat per minute kind of um uh kind of stretch there um so it's very groovy very bouncy uh without going full-blown house with that tempo uh the ep continues to have kind of like classic Katra type production um in terms of like 808s being very boomy and very bass heavy and synthesized drums but like pairing it with like analog like hi-hats like I, i'm not sure if you guys like are like listening to like the hi-hats in, in these songs when we're playing them or not but like that that's a straight up real hi-hat that he's hitting with with some sticks like that's not like done like that's not a sampled hi-hat or whatever at least that's what it sounds like to me oh, okay. um, and it gives like the it gives like the the drum some liveliness and some like room mm-hmm. almost um add that to like the fact that he like reverbs the shit out of like those claps and the hi-hats um it really just creates like a full body drum track um which is again very much a k Trinata special uh, but he just continues to do it on, on this record, and it's one of my favorite things about Katrina. It's just his drum tracks sound so cool. Like they're they're like a mixture of like you know like kind of nostalgic like classic drumming and like drum machine, you know, sampled hits, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, it just just makes for a nice drum track. Um, some other kind of familiar sounds that we get. Um, like wobbly keys, vinyl crackles, these sorts of things, and uh, pretty much a clap on every single snare hit, which is cool. Um, so quintessential Katra shit is what uh, is really what it boils down to. Now, to go into each track individually is where we can have a little bit of fun here. So Intimidated, which is what we just listened to featuring her, uh, lyrically got a pretty harmless song. Uh, not much to talk about there. <laughs> sort of sounds like uh, someone's having a, a drunk dance floor fling, which is hey, all the power to you, eh? All the power to you, huh? Just here to party. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just here to party. <laughs> and uh, vocally, her, um, she just kind of like floats over the production. Um, she has like such a good voice and it really reminds me of, uh, one of Katra's earliest remixes that I remember listening to, uh, which is a remix he did of Janet Jackson's if, um, which again, if you have not listened to that, it's, uh, it's in his boiler room, but it's also on his SoundCloud. It continues to be one of my favorite Katra Nata songs. Um, but it, it's just the more and more I listen to intimidated, it's like eerily similar to that in terms of hers voice and. Um, even the the production uh, behind it, it sounds sounds a lot like that song, which is awesome because that song rocks. Uh, the mix 
is awesome. Uh, I'm not sure who's responsible. I, I mean, I know that Kate Turner is responsible for doing his mixing. I'm not sh- sure who's responsible for the mastering and whatnot. But the low end kick and bass is just awesome. Like it just it comes through like so clear and it's somehow like super loud without it being like overpowering for like the other parts of the uh, of the track, which is really cool. Um, and I love that little like hiccup kick that he does, where it's like do 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 do, but like it's like the Ba-do. velocity on that first kick is like so low yeah. that it's like Ba-do. it's like whispered in almost. Yeah, just it's a just subtle, like, very subtle. It's just like oh oh yeah. oh my oh my mm. goodness. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That's what it feels like, and he do- and he pairs it with like hiccup tie hats too, which uh, is also a fun little touch. So. <laughs> like that a whole bunch um so that's that's all the notes i really have on intimidated but be careful and this is where i think the album probably for many gets like maybe not not more interesting or anything like that but but just a little different from what we're used to from k up until this point um this song could just as easily have been thundercat featuring k like right. it sounds like a k song do you know what I mean? Or sorry, like a Thundercat song, um, which I guess to a certain extent it is. But uh, lyrically, again, we're not seeing anything too spectacular here. Thundercat is uh, getting some loving from a booty call, it looks like. And <laughs> he really, really likes her hair. He digs her hair. He makes mention of it at least two times. So um, Thundercat likes his partner's hair. Uh also, Thundercat's falsetto. That uh, I, like, I like how that you called. I, I like how falsetto you called her is, his partner, as if it's like they have like an ongoing yeah, thing. Yeah, it's, maybe it's, it's like a committed his partner relationship. for the night. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 His, yeah, yeah, his, yeah. his booty call partner. Right. His booty call partner. That's yeah. a cool name for a band. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but Thundercat's falsetto. You know, not much to say there. It's so good. It's so good. I could listen yeah. to it forever. Like. It's just like it, like there's, it, it's like both, f- like funny, and like, like sexy. it's like whimsical, and like but s- also mad cool. Yeah, yeah, like just good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wish mm-hmm. my falsetto sounded like that, where it wasn't just me being like, ah, and people being like, ah, oh, okay, <laughs> enough, thank you. Is that, that was kind of Definitely not. Um, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> So, also, th- we get a fun little thing in this track as well, lyrically slash vocally. Uh, Kate Trinata, I believe, is on the, the chorus as well. He says, just let me see you walk in kind of like talking, spoken word, rapping. Just that one line. Hmm. Um, I'm assuming it's him. I don't know who else it is, but it's just kind of like a, a background to to what uh, Thundercat's singing about. Um, which I think is a first. I don't know if I've ever heard Kater's voice on any of his music before. So, anyways, that's kind of cool. Uh, but this song mostly fulfills everything I would want out of a Thundercat Kater not a collab. Um, all like the Kater Thundercat fantasies I've had in my life, uh, and I'm looking forward to them hopefully continuing to work together because that's the thing that happens is Kater not works with someone, and generally speaking, they work together again in the future. Right. Um, which brings us to what I think is the climax of the album, um, which is Pay for Haiti. And Pay for Haiti is the uh, Makame um, featuring last song of uh, the EP. Uh, and lyrically, very hard to, to figure out, especially since I don't speak Haitian Creole, which is uh, about 50% to 60% of the lyrics are Haitian Creole. Um, which is cool. Uh, but because Apple Music has the lyrics blocked, so you can't see the lyrics, and uh, even Genius, hmm. I went on online and tried to find them on Genius, they're also blocked there. So it looks like Katra is like intentionally not letting those lyrics come out, or hmm. someone who has control over that is not letting those lyrics come out at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, kind of like to to talk about what I what I took away from the song lyrically from what I could get is um, there's this one bar that kind of really sticks out to me and it's uh, I told my blank uh, pray for Haiti he said take the R out uh, what he means by that is Makami earlier in the year had a project 
called Pray for Haiti. Very, very good project. Again, if you're into like underground hip hop, check it out. It's awesome. Um, but uh, Take the R out kind of implies uh, a more like direct course of like, hey, you want to like take action. You want to like help the people of Haiti. It's mm-hmm. going to take more than your prayers sort of thing. Right, right. Um, it's going to take your payers. Which is, uh, which is cool. And also, yeah, it's going to take your, your hard-earned, <laughs> hard-earned cash, bud. Um, and like, fair enough. I think that's something that obviously is, um, a big sentiment for a lot of people that are in the trenches of a lot of social and political issues right now. For sure. Um, that like thoughts and prayers, like cool, but what are you going to do about it? Right. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of what I suspect a lot of the song is about. That's what the English lyrics kind of sound like, uh, the Haitian Creole lyrics, any of y'all out there speak Haitian Creole, please tell me what they're about. Um, I would love to know. And uh, yeah, the cool thing about this song too is it's a huge departure of what Makame usually sounds like. Like this is by far like the hap- like happiest, bounciest, like most up-tempo track I've ever heard him on. Um, even if like the lyrics aren't necessarily happy, it just like has that kind of like joyful like bounce that we've, we've gotten used to with Katron at this point. Um, and I can't express enough how much of a U-turn that is to his uh, his other kind of um, uh, body of work so far. Uh, but it's also, it kind of shows where I think Katronata could be going because this song is also more like political, if that's the word you want to use. I don't know if that's super the word uh, that I would pin to this, but it's definitely the most socially conscious lyrically um, that we've seen a feature from Katronata go. And even the album cover, which will show up here as well, uh, is like, I'm not really sure what it is, but it looks like people like at a protest or like people like gathering in some sort. So or like a ceremony of some sorts. Yeah. Yeah. Some sort of ceremony, something like that. And, uh, and yeah, so that's, I don't know, maybe that's something that, uh, was intentional given pay for Hades content, um, as well. So all, this is all to say it's exciting. Uh, Katra has already proven to us um, over multiple projects now that he can make these bouncy bangers seemingly effortlessly, right? He can keep us dancing. Any dance floor, he can revive. He can start up. He can keep it going. Um, so with Intimidated, he now shows us that there's an extra layer that can be added to that dance movement. And that's something that uh, is cool because I think we see like a diverse and multi-layered approach to dance starting to take shape here. Um, Just kind of like the message of like, we can party while also consuming a message that's worth remembering. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's what the best type of music, there's the best music does is uh, it's, but it can be both simultaneously a party while also making you think about its lyrical contents or, or the, uh, the message it's trying to, to send. So um, I think that's achieved on this EP, which is cool. Um, and also really cool that we have like two Haitian artists working together. I, I don't know many Haitian artists. Um, like obviously there's uh, Wyclef, which is like a big Haitian artist that definitely is like known for being Haitian. Um, but yeah, just cool to see, to see that representation. And that's something that again, um, I uh, I am very psyched and like proud to see coming from Canada like this artist that's like you know just talking about the realities of, of being from another place so and what comes with that so pretty awesome I love the EP I'm sure that's no surprise at all uh, but ultimately when I'm when I'm giving this thing intimidated gets a solid eight point three reverbed hi-hats out of 10. Very so, good. But eight, eight Very point interesting. three of those. Yeah. Yeah. What Not are your the... thoughts? What are your thoughts and prayers on something like this? Well, first of all, thoughts and prayers. Um, I guess um, I, I like... Oh. Go ahead. Go thoughts ahead. and prayers. Shout out thoughts and prayers. Yeah, but go ahead, Hunter. Yeah, oh, I... Uh, I you know, it was really uh, interesting with your thoughts about house music, and I guess I felt like it was like 
laid back house music like because i feel like totally. house music can go like it can go like really fast and like it bangs really hard but this <clears> kind <throat> of has like that loosey-goosey danceable feel and that the but also i was actually really intrigued by what you said about the drums and i think that very true of like when you have real drums um i take it he's not like has a hi-hat when he's there live right like his guess it's like taken from a live so sample actually, kind of thing? I've never seen him live, but no, not from what I've seen. Okay. It's always, like, he's usually he's usually straight up DJing. So yeah, it's he's like, straight up DJing, yeah. That, yeah, that, that, yeah. I, I would imagine that. But I think I really liked, and I think I agree with that of, like, well, it got me the question of, of uh, finding out, like, maybe DJs that are drummers kind of have that benefit of, like, right. yeah, like, maybe a real drum sound actually does liven up the mix a little versus maybe, like, just a sample, you know. But that's not to not that's not to bash samples. But I just kind of liked like the different kind of take that he's approaching, and he's got like some star-studded names on uh, this EP. So we'll totally. have to see what. Uh, and like you said, like um, name his name is uh like really huge right now. So I hope that he releases more with Thundercat. But also maybe this was like like maybe like a test kind of thing of like putting out a, a couple features out there but i would love him to collab with more people because i think it's awesome I totally it. it's good yeah yeah i think too that like house yeah. is one of those genres that is so um like busy like there are so many people making house music right. And like internationally yeah yeah it's 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 a genre that exists in probably every on every continent, if not in every country, of of people trying to do this, and the fact that yeah. uh, K Tronada mm-hmm, mm-hmm. has kind of risen above that noise. Not to say that <laughs> the rest of <laughs> you know the people making houses just noise. Yeah. Right, you're right. You hate you hate house music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I do. I loathe it. And yeah. um, and uh, except K Tronada, no. Um, <laughs> I like house music, but it is one of those things right, that right, I'm right. like, is this because he's risen above? Because <laughs> he's risen above. Um, like a loaf of bread. Uh, but he's also like, I think he's a great entry point beyond just being one of the best, Mm. maybe to ever do it, which I think this EP and all of his work kind of stands as testament to, to the fact that he really is one of the best to ever do it. Um, I think he also acts Mm. as a great place for people who are like, I've heard house. I like house, but like what, like where do I turn? Um, Ketronada is just dependably sure. awesome, and by 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 um, yes. yeah yeah by digging in a little bit to sort of what his influences are or his collaborators are, um, it's a great way to kind of dive in to the genre uh, in general. As a whole, yeah. Would you say like he's the he's the starter pack? Like if someone that didn't know house was getting into house music, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, them you would hand them a Catronada album. Yeah, I wouldn't know what other yeah. album to hand. He's them. on the short list for sure. Yeah. yeah. What is he's, the he's what is the, the album list. you would hand them? Would you hand them this one, or would you hand them maybe like his most uh, his successful one, or what? What what is the answer there? I would. I would, mm, even though Bubba is the Grammy winner, I would yeah. probably start with ninety nine point nine nine, um, just because I think it's maybe got a little bit more like house, like purity, like proper on yeah. it. If that makes sense, right, yeah. right, right, right. Um, which is, you know, maybe the point of like the introduction to begin with. But like he's on the short list, right? Like it's K Tronada. Like I could think of like maybe a couple of like Daft Punk. Yeah, would that's be, the big would one. Be like that's kind of like other the, the Renaissance one. Yeah, yeah, would be the other artist maybe to bring in. Uh, but yeah, it's it's not it's not a long list. Um, if you're yeah, if you're looking to get someone into like dance music and and uh, and house music, um, who who just is like completely completely unfamiliar. Um, but that, that the other thing about that too is like with Katra, I think he. Like, so we were talking about, like, the analog drums, right? And, like, how mm-hmm. that, like, creates, like, a full body drum track. Um, I think that the cool thing about Katra is he is such a sample, usually a sample-heavy musician. And I don't mean that necessarily in his drums. However, that is also the case. He, he's, like, a really good, like, loop finder. Like, mm-hmm. for instance, 10%, which was the single off of Bubba, is a loop from, like, a like 1970s disco record, like, that drum, that drum loop. So, 
like he's really good at finding breaks. Um, but he's a big sample heavy guy. Like he usually is, is sampling a record and then building a song from there. Um, melodically on this EP, he doesn't do any of that. It's all keys, like laid out keys, drums, a bass line, some 808s, and then just mostly like, like accents, like little like flutters or little things, yeah. vinyl crackles, some, some perks here and there. And like, that's, this is the first project I can think of that that's been the case. Um, like in terms of multi song, like of course there's singles he's put out that are similar, but in terms of like having like, you know, three songs on, on a project and none of them have a sample. Like that's, yeah, that's very much the only time I can remember him doing that. Um, so, so yeah, just also cool. Like he's just like taking a, maybe a different approach to like writing his music at least in this project, um, than we're used to, because it is very sample heavy, heavy otherwise, which is also how you get some of that like liveliness to it though, right? Like, um, that's the thing about samples is they already have a character. They already have, uh, they already have like a, like a vibe or like an energy to them, um, that you can now repurpose, which is cool. Like you don't have to worry so much about like the energy coming, uh, with the sounds cause it's already predetermined a little bit. And that's why Daft Punk also has, I think a really great house discography because they're, they're sample heavy as well. And it like creates this atmosphere kind of right out the gate just with the samples, which is cool. Um, so anyway, this is all to say, yes, K Tronado is a fantastic intro into house music. If you haven't really jumped into that before. Um, and also hate to say it better than death. Oh, oh, hot take. Been, huh? Hot take. Has he? I don't know if I agree with that, but uh, look, I would have to dive further into. I don't. I don't know. If, look, guys, I, I don't know if we that. have to even do let's this. Let's not get so divisive on our I first don't. YouTube show. Yeah, I, I don't I think it's a this or that. Jesus, guys, calm down. I don't think it's a this or that. Not a this or that. It doesn't yeah. have to be a this or that. Yeah, it's not a this or that. No, no. It doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be a this or that. Yeah, it doesn't but have to be a this, this or that. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have. But it's this. No, you. Yeah, you established your opinion. Yeah. Yeah. No, but uh, but yeah, so Kate Trinata, awesome, loved it. Uh, let's get into the next track, unless you guys have anything else you, you desperately want to say before we do. Nah, nah. What's good? You, nah, nah. you just... Ooh, nah, nah, what's her name? You nah, just nah. wait until Daft Punk gets back together. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Hey, You're going to regret it. Album. third or fourth farewell show is going to be so good. <laughs> next like, album, oh. we're, we're going to see it. They're going to come back. Yeah, for Kanye sure. Kanye okay, West, well, Daft Punk. Oh, let's go. Okay, with that being said, uh, Pay for Haiti featuring Makame, K. Trinata. Let's go. You can pray on a nigga, you can pray for a nigga, no sweat. But if you pray on a nigga, don't play, because I'm sick of in the head. You can pray on a nigga, you can pray for a nigga, no sweat. But if you pray on a nigga, don't play. Hey, my girl, you're fake, remember, boy, you're back on it, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm Big, you need to pay for Haiti, that I'm talking about. Hey, 
I sit the Perry Ace way down, pick up the Ace, I up the stake, Muhammad do save us in another great LVMA's puffing another J, niggas selling spirits, better get out the way, this just another taste, I see niggas in your feelings, you don't wanna fade, underweight nigga wanna plate and he don't wanna pay, I keep a stick at home base like I'm buttin' strays, wanna play like vitamins, fuck it, wanna date, niggas talking like they unafraid, if we talking bars, then the payday, no less than a hundred K, they like to say they involved, but they don't want exchange, when the shots go off, you cross in another plane, you keep going deals, one I back on yo. Baka foka vem yo tu aze musa yo yo Ki kotels wana vek musa yo Yo baka foka vem yo tu aze musa yo Musa yo Trinata, pay for Haiti. Good one. Yeah, it's a solid one. And again, as I said, anyone who knows Creole, please. Yo, shout out to us. Yeah, let like to know us know. What I would love to there. know. Yeah, I would love to know the lyrics. I would because uh, yeah. until until Genius gets their shit together and we get those lyrics, I'll never know. Seriously. Um. But anyways, there you go. K Trinata, Intimidated EP, Tasty Tasty. Um. Which brings us to our next segment. Here on Servant Sonic and uh, handling the next segment's duties is <laughs> duty is uh, <laughs> Jacrib Soyon. Uh, and the next segment is known as Spicy Staple. And Spicy Staple is where we bring an album that's important to us from the past and we dig it up and we share it with y'all, tell you why it's so awesome, and then give it a rating. But the way that we like to introduce Spicy Staple over the last several episodes has been with a nice little acapella served to you fresh by the Servant Sonic bros. So uh, so f- for the sake of, you know, K Trinata, let's start with some... You know? Oh, yeah. That'll do it. Keep going, yep. Okay. Dum 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 Awesome. Very nice. Yeah, super good. So good. Kitchenada, give us a shout anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, every time. Okay, go ahead, Jake. Mr. Take it away. Jacques what are we, to? Um, what are we you talking about? Us. Yeah, I'm super yeah. excited about this spicy staple. Um, this is one that is very near and dear to my heart today. We're talking about Daniel Johnston. The the one and only Daniel Johnston, mm. who has been called by many uh, one of the greatest songwriters, contemporary songwriters of all time. Uh he has been compared in terms of his uh, artistic arc to Brian Wilson, in terms of his body of work to Type. William Blake, for those of you that are mm. history buffs. Nice. Um, he uh, Maybe we'll start early life. So he was born in, in Sacramento, California, to like fundamentalist Christian conservative parents, and uh, the youngest of five awesome siblings yeah the best um and he quickly from a very young age uh started creating music uh and recording it on like tape decks 
um, and was sort of just called to make art uh, from the very beginning. Um, but there were also some early signs of like some pretty severe mental illness, which is a, a I think a, a important part of his life story. That is obviously a very sensitive topic that uh, um, I want to try to talk about in a respectful and uh, sensitive way. Um, but I also don't want to focus too too heavily on that. Um, by the time he was like 19 or 20, he was getting local recognition for his work and his family moved to Texas. Uh, one day, he kind of ran away from home, not telling anybody, and joined a carnival um, where he was making music. Uh, and uh, 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 in Houston, got a job at Astro World, which is... I don't know what it actually is. I assume it's like a restaurant slash thing. Um, but there at that time, isn't that the? Yeah, that's the uh, the motherfucking motherfucking. Like uh, that's what Travis Scott named his his album after was. Right, it's a theme park. It's a no? theme park, right? Is it a theme park? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Great. Super. <laughs> I think it I think actually so. is. I think it actually is. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Weird that. You know, with all the Astro World news recently, that that's the case. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird. Yeah, yeah. But it was while working at Astro World that he recorded uh, two of his seminal albums. One being, of course, um, "Hi, How Are You," the unfinished album, uh, which is maybe his most kind of iconic um, album art. Of which I actually so yesterday I uh, did a story on a local tattoo shop called Strange World Tattoos for a news project I'm doing and okay. I got a tattoo while I was there that's cool and I got I'll show you guys oh amazing yeah yeah it's oh Jeremiah God, the Frog nice from Hi How Are You that's cool <laughs> yeah that's cool right um, perfect cool and so he recorded that album as well as um, another one, Yip Jump Music, which I also Yip happen Jump to have music. on vinyl. No. There it is. There it is. There right it is. There. Love That's the to one. See it. And Love he recorded. That's a quick yip and a jump. A quick yip jump music. And he recorded both ground. of those albums on, I wrote it down, uh, a Sanyo Mono boombox. Uh, via tape. Okay. One more time. One more time for me again. A Sanyo. For me again. A Sanyo. Mono boombox. Oh, Sanyo. Like the brand. Sanyo. The brand yeah. Sanyo. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 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 He uh, he then uh, while touring with this uh, a carnival, which was maybe Astro World. Does that make sense? Is it a traveling thing? I I wish I knew. Yeah, I'll, I'll hit it with a Google. I'll hit it with a Google. Hit it with a quick chatting. gig. Um, but so what happened was at the traveling carnival, whether or not it was Astro World, he uh, they stopped at uh, in Austin, Texas, and that's where he left the carnival and uh, started uh, kind of trying to make his way on his own. And he met a bunch of local artists. For those of you that know, Austin is sort of one of those cities that is a musical center in the states right and it was right. at a time when austin was really starting to sort of take off and find its uh musical voice its musical culture and daniel johnson sort of happened to be there at that time um when mtv caught wind of what was going on musically in austin and sent uh, uh, uh producers down for the show uh the cutting edge which was a fairly famous MTV show. And Daniel Johnson, sort of the story goes that he sort of scammed his way onto the show and started passing out his tapes, showing everybody, hi, how are you? And uh, really sort of uh, 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 stole the spotlight um, and became sort of the hit of of that show. Um, and his fame and acclaim really sort of started to grow um, over time. The thing about his music is... Um, and I don't know. Have you guys listened to much Daniel Johnston? I listened to this all. album. Yep. You have listened to this I've album. Listened to, yeah, I've listened to. Yep. Yep. Yeah, because in all, he's had something like 
over 20 studio albums with countless yeah there's like a lot there's a, there's yeah. a lot of them bang yeah yeah with, and I with, think they're with, still finding stuff that his dad or that his brother said. Not to interrupt you, sorry. Yeah, no, yeah. but totally, totally, because it is. It's it's one of these things that's sort of legendary. That uh, when he was first making music, he was just recording it via these like home tape recording devices. Yeah, like in his that, room. Yeah, that he couldn't mass cool. produce. So what he would do is sit there and play like ten songs onto a tape. And then go run out into the street and hand it to whoever looked somewhat interested. And then go back home yeah. and start from scratch and do the same 10 songs again. Because he couldn't mass produce them. So there's all of these unique that's recordings. Right. Wow. Um, and so that's sort of why they're still finding so much music. Because there are songs that he doesn't, he didn't even remember that he had written or made or whatever. And all these countless versions <laughs> as well. Um the thing about Daniel Johnston was he was severely um, mentally ill uh, and throughout his uh, sort of career and when he was starting to get a real cult following, had multiple mental health crises in which like there was sort of like these paths of destruction that uh, he left in his wake mm. um, and really uh, on multiple occasions kind of self-sabotaged like there's one story of uh his manager setting up a meeting with electra records where while mm, daniel yeah. was in a in a mental health facility um his manager uh organized a meeting with some executives from electra and they sat down and wrote up a contract that it's been stated was like the most uh, 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 in 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 honor of uh, or in support of an artist contract that has ever been written, because it had clauses like he has no obligation to tour, he has no obligation to mm. promote <laughs> his music, uh, he has a doctor on staff at all times, and we're gonna pay him a hundred thousand dollars, no matter what, no matter what he does, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. maybe the best contract ever offered to a recording artist. And uh, he was suffering from delusions at the time and so believed that Electra Records, who uh, Metallica was also signed to, he believed that right. Electra was satanic because they had Metallica on the label. And so mm. he fired his manager and the contract was never signed. Um, oh, damn. And so, you know, he had all these opportunities to really kind of capitalize on his art um, and never really did uh, because of various reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But simply on the basis of the quality of his music, uh, he has garnered an incredible international cult following and has been called, as I mentioned, one of the greatest lyricists of all time. Um, his music's been covered by some of the great songwriters like Tom Waits, um, Beck, uh, Phoebe Bridgers has done uh, covers of his work, uh, The Lemon Twigs, Death Cab for Cutie, so many others. Um, certain songs in his discography are like, you can't listen to them and not have them bring you to tears. There's there's actually a documentary about Daniel Johnston mm -hmm. called The Devil and Daniel Johnston. Um, if you haven't seen it, that's all I actually heard about him. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible, incredible movie. It's actually Oscar nominated. Um, okay. And somebody, somebody in that documentary puts it really well. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing, but they say something like, when you, when you first start listening to his music, um, it's natural to think that there's some angle where you don't really know what you're listening to. And you think, what is this guy trying to do? But as you listen... Hmm you mm. quickly realize that this is some of the best music that's ever been made. Um, and you start to hear the way they put it in, the guy puts it in the interview is you start to hear the entire orchestra. You start to hear everything that was in Daniel Johnston's mm. mind where what you're really listening to is just him on like an electric piano or on an acoustic guitar. 
but you can really hear what's in his mind. Um, and it's so beautiful. Uh, I want to check out the song in a second. You know, I chose I chose this album based on the track. This is one of my favorite Daniel Johnston songs. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily recommend this album over others because out of 21 albums, it's hard to choose a best, you know, or, or one that I'd want to feature sure, over right. the others. Um, but this particular song is, is uh, one that always just gets me going. Um, but before we check it out, right. I would also be remiss not to mention his art. Uh, he's like a prolific uh, illustrator, and uh, uh, his art has almost as huge a following as his music internationally, um, with, with mm -hmm. his drawings mm -hmm. hanging in museums at this point all over the world. One of his biggest uh, uh, supporters in terms of his sketches is um, actually Matt Greening of The Simpsons, creator of The Simpsons. Um, and a lot yeah. of his art focuses on the same themes as his music. It's like uh, God, Satan, um, battling evil, Captain America, unrequited love, um, and so forth. Um, and uh, sadly, uh, Daniel Johnson did pass away in uh, September of 2019 uh, due to, I guess, natural causes. But uh, his his legacy lives on. And um, you know, I've I've I read an article the other day that suggested that uh, his music was the blueprint by which indie rock came to be. Um, and so without further ado, let's mm. check it out. Um, this is The Story of an Artist by Daniel Johnston. Uh, good. Good. I, I, I don't know. Go with you this room. It's like when you go to read your own poetry, you get all choked up. And I'll tell a story About an artist growing old Some would try for fame and glory Others aren't so bold Everyone and friends and family Saying, hey, get a job why do you only do that only? Why are you so odd? We don't really like what you do. We don't think anyone ever will. It's a problem that you have. And this problem's made you ill. Listen up and I'll tell a story About an artist growing old Some would try for fame and glory Others aren't so bold The artist walks alone Someone says behind his back He's got his gall to call himself that He doesn't even know where he's at The artist walks among the flowers Appreciating the sun He does this all his waking hours But is it really so wrong? They sit in front of their TVs Saying, hey, this is fun And they laugh at the artist Saying he doesn't know how to have fun The best things in life are truly free 
singing birds and laughing bees. You got me wrong, says he. The sun don't shine in your TV. Listen up and I'll tell a story about an artist growing old. Some would try for fame and glory. Others aren't so bold. Everyone and friends and family saying, hey, get a job. Why do you only do that only? Why are you so odd? We don't really like what you do. We don't think anyone ever will. It's a problem that you have. And this problem's made you ill. Listen up and I'll tell a story About an artist growing old Some would try for fame and glory Others just like to watch the world Yeah, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. it's kind of like <laughs> the uh, like the antithesis of Catronata, like almost a lack of rhythm. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, the question I have is, so you were saying that he's done a bunch of recordings and whatnot of the same songs. Right. Did he ever, like, cause you're saying that that deal was left on the table... Did he ever eventually sign a deal? So and he, get, he did sign a deal, actually. You know, it was... Like, um, like... Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you. Um, he signed go ahead, um, go ahead. after uh, Kurt Cobain when Nirvana was at their absolute peak. And that's it's hard to understate, um, or rather hard to overstate how famous Nirvana was. In like the early ish nineties, mid nineties. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. And at every opportunity, Kurt yeah. Cobain would wear a Daniel Johnston t shirt and talk about Daniel Johnston. And so um, executives from Atlantic Records chased him down and uh, signed him for a deal. And they released an album called Fun, which was, I think, a 19. 19- 83 recording that then they released on like CD or whatever it was popular at the time whatever format and it mm-hmm. tanked like it sold like 5,000 copies or something um, and I think mm-hmm. it's partly they you know they just missed the whole point of yeah of all of it um, mm-hmm. and uh, and so then he was dropped by Atlantic and was in and out of institutions um, for a long time and uh, sort of never broke through and never... I mean, he has some recordings that are more polished and more produced, some of his later work. Um, But a lot of it sounds like that. And I think think why Daniel Johnson is, is one of my favorites is for that reason that it's... It's like he... He can't play that well. He doesn't sing that well. You know, he he can't really sing. And he, he can just barely sort of... He's decent at piano, but he can barely play other instruments. But it's like this right. unquenchable drive to create 
and to do it from a place of like absolute purity it's like music without ego a mm-hmm. little bit um yeah and it just comes yeah, from a agree. place that's so yeah. so vulnerable and so kind of intense um it's like for me the the feeling that i get listening to daniel johnston is like listening to classical music like chopin or like mozart mm. like that feeling of awe you know is is uh for me what uh, the experience mm-hmm. of daniel johnston is like right yeah very cool if i could uh if i could add on to that jake um upon and this is again i i i, I was i remember watching it was uh, surprisingly enough a watch mojo top 10 like artist documentaries and uh the devil and daniel johnston was brought up and that's how i heard his name and then when you sent uh what you were going to be covering that was kind of my first like actual sit down listening to the full album and what you were just saying there i just wanted to kind of double on and say i think it's also with kind of the cassette format that he was releasing the music on um and it sounds cheesy but i think it's one of those things of like the 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 intimate recording of him in his room like you're hearing people in the back talk you're hearing possibly i think that's his mom talking in the background but it's yeah i think it's like this unflinching honesty and feelings that he's putting into his records mm-hmm. and um and then i think you know when when that album was a flop i think people couldn't understand they they couldn't understand kind of why was he popular why right. he is successful well and that's and a good was point in an article i was reading oh, yeah mm-hmm. i was gonna say um when i first showed uh daniel johnson to a close friend their reaction was they 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 didn't get it they were like what is this guy's deal yeah um like what's wrong with this guy <laughs> And I think it's because it's so it's so vulnerable that it's it's almost hard to listen to. But if you just like often listening to this music, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've often got my eyes closed. You know, I'm like trying to do like some sensory deprivation mm-hmm, shit mm-hmm. to like just experience, try to get the fullest yeah, yeah. Um, understanding of what he's trying to communicate. And I think that's the best way to listen to to his music. Um, but I thoroughly recommend that anybody who's listening, if you have the opportunity to watch The Devil and Daniel Johnston, it's a great intro into um, what makes his music so unique and beautiful and um, important. I will say uh, that I read this article that Lana Del Rey, she was saying that um, that she was inspired by him because there is no perfectionism at all there's nothing it's basically kind of that cheesy saying again of like art for art's sake kind of thing right and that's actually motivated me of like i I maybe struggle with that perfectionism when in fact he'll he'll just he just like it's just him in his bedroom on a cassette and like that's something kind of to be marveled at of being like you should just do it anyway there is no and like kind of like like releasing your art just for people to hear and i think that's something very magical about that and beautiful about that so Mm -hmm. um yeah totally totally nice so there you go wow i uh i uh i guess it comes to our um score that we're giving for this particular project what do we got yeah what's the rating jake oh i didn't even think about the rating um this album Specifically, I'll give it a, let's see, um, I'll give it a, a tasty, you know what, this, 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 this particular album, here's what I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it, um, I'm going to give it 8.3 fresh tattoos. 8.3? Out of Yo, 10. Nice. Out of 10. His entire body of work, it's, however, it's I got to def- give a 10 out of 10. It's definitely a mood album. I feel like you have to be in a kind of a special mood. Yeah, go to throw it, on at least this record for me upon listening to. It. No, that's not. The, yeah, please listen to it. Go but for I, a I walk. Like gotta be, pop it gotta in. be like you gotta be. Yeah, go for a nice walk. Yeah. 
Awesome. And uh, what's the name of this specific record that this song is off of? Oh, uh, uh, Don't Be Scared, right? Don't Be Scared is don't correct, be yeah. Scared. This is Don't Be Scared. Okay, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jake. I, uh, I can say both Hunter and I really, really appreciate that. Mm. The, YouTube, the millions of YouTubers that are, uh, that are catching this right now. Oh, they can't thank you enough. And, uh, and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, 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 all those other podcasts. Anchor. things. <laughs> that, yeah, they're so thankful, too. So thank you, Jay. Hey, thank you, guys. That was awesome. awesome. Thank you, Daniel man. Johnston. Really like that. Hey, all right, Well, you want to know what? Got a, little bit of, uh, got a little bit of info for you, too. Astro World was a Six Flags theme park that is now dead. It's gone. Uh, it's no longer a thing. But it was a Six Flags joint. Makes sense. There you go. Now you know. Now the world knows. Yeah. Which brings us to the last segment that we have for Servant Sonic here. Uh, Servant Sonic, every single episode. Unless it's a bite-sized breakdown. But every single episode where the whole gang is together, we pit two hosts against each other in what we call Combat Rock. Now, Combat Rock is all about us trying to show you new tunes. And the best part is you, the listener, gets to decide which tune reigns supreme and therefore which host reigns supreme and gets a much coveted victory in the Combat Rock Battle Royale Uh, arena? Sure. Um, And what what we do is we we make it seasons. So the first host to get to five wins gets to then make the other two hosts perform some sort of thing, some sort of task, some sort of shitty payoff that they have to do for losing Combat Rock. And I just won um, this season's Combat Rock. Uh, The final score, let me just bring up my old uh, Google sheet here that we had running, is uh, Lee coming in with a whopping five wins, Jake and Hunter a win each. So, uh, guys, that was not your best showing. That's, we don't know if this show. is true, This is though. bullshit. We don't know if the results are true. Lee could be the pulling results, these out of his ass. The results yeah, the results are, are bullshit. We don't the thing know. about the these results, results are posted on totally our Instagram. lying. Yeah, the thing is the results, results. We don't know if Lee is lying. On the Instagram. So anyway, Look, yeah. Look, guys, this is this is the sound of two people in fear oh, for the consequences of their this. actions. Oh, my God. And we have the results of the, po- of the polls that we put up on instagram you can go check them allegedly Uh, and hunter i don't know why i don't know why you're even arguing hunter hunter you're you're you've got some sort of like i don't you've got some sort of like uh like looking in the mirror you got to do because you voted for my combat rock song (laughs) i don't know i was just like on the song that i like to hear yourself Hunter, what the fuck? Whatever. Whatever. This is all to say. Hunter's got to look inside. Hunter's got to look inside and think think long and hard about what he's done here. Um, but the winner of last uh, last uh, show's Combat Rock was me. The song was by The Count, The Way You Make Me Feel, featuring uh, Mark Rebelet. That was a track, though. Uh, that really, truly so, was a track. I do like Mark Rebelet. I, like, I do like Mark Rebelet. It's respect. a banger. It's a banger. Respect. But now you guys got to pay it off. So what I asked them uh, to do before the show, I said, guys, please go into your local grocer uh, and <coughs> grab some mayonnaise and milk. Now, of course, it, it couldn't this be that so simple. Gross. Hunter had to be a 13-year-old and ask for chocolate Shut up. milk, which I yeah, allowed. Yeah, not doing, not doing <laughs> white milk. Jake, Jake was even worse. I have he dietary like, restrictions. Um, can I, do tahini I have and beer? dietary yeah, restrictions. All right, Jake. Oh, all right. Oh, dietary oh, restrictions. I'll do tahini and beer. Whatever. Uh, I allowed it because tahini and beer still sounds disgusting. So what I need you guys to do is, can you please show the audience your glasses there, or your cups, where you're going to be making your concoction? I hope they're see-through. Okay, perfect. And there we go. Awesome. What I want you to do is take a full spoonful. I'm looking for a <coughs> teaspoon, teaspoon oh, to tablespoon 
of tahini slash mayo. Uh, a fork. I want two two good forkings. Two solid two. forkings. And we want to see it on camera here, folks. We want to see it on camera. Two solid forks. Here's the thing. I'm a loser, but I'm still equitable. This is fair trade organic tahini. Okay? <laughs> right. Thank Awesome. Amazing. Tahini it up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone clap so he's got to get it up. Everyone clap so he's got to get up. Go. There it is. Clapping everyone doesn't clap. help me get it up, by go. the way. All right. Get that. Everyone clap. Let's get clap so he's got to get it up. Huh? I'm sorry for our audio listeners yep. listening to this horrible noises coming from me. Come on, everyone clap. Okay, we need uh, we need that. Okay, once once the tahini is in the cup, I would like to see. Once the mayo is in the cup, let's see. Hunter is already chunding. Okay. Solid. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, Ugh. really, really having a coffin fit over there. Yeah, bro, I hate um, this shit. I hate this. Um, okay, now I want a... Roughly, roughly a cup's worth of your of your uh, liquid of choice vomit. there. So we've okay. got beer for Jake and uh, and Choco milk. All right, that's good, Hunter. You can stop there. Okay. And uh, Jake, let me know. And here I have my best friend's girl, Kolsch style ale. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, just tell me when to go. Uh, just well, tell me when to go. Gonna have to gonna have to I'm not even look at it when I can't even look at well, it well we're gonna have to do it so let's get a nice stir I want to make sure okay, all the ingredients all the ingredients are nice and mixed <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> Jake don't do that oh god it's Ooh, it's, 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 it's doing this there, weird mucusy floating to the top don't thing. stop 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 yeah. stop stop just tell me after okay. I'm gonna vomit <sighs> Okay, so now here's it's, the real it's gas. Frothing. These two are going head to head in combat rock this week. <laughs> oh, don't these do that. two <sighs> are going head to head in combat rock this week, which means these uh, these two hosts, these two lovely hosts, have brought forth <laughs> a new song for you guys to enjoy. Um, and you guys get to go vote on it. You can vote on Instagram. We have the poll up. Usually the day the episode drops, we have the poll up, so you have 24 hours to go vote there, and you decide uh, whose song wins. How it works is they get to choose a 30-second chunk of the song that they think will get you guys going. So please listen up to this song. How this is going to work is you guys are going to pitch your song, but before you do, you chug your drink. Then you got 30 seconds to pitch your song. Okay, so who wants to pitch their song first? I'll go first. I'll go first. <laughs> God okay, damn chug it! Your drink. Okay, go. So I have to chug my drink and then pitch the song. Chug your drink. Yep. Okay. Can I just get a quick shot? Can you guys see how gnarly this looks? Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, it looks really good. I hate it's, that. It looks pretty good. It looks so that. much worse that. That. in real that. life. You said fair trade, yeah. I don't know if I could do this. <laughs> It looks really bad. I don't know if I can do it. You have to. <sighs> Just take a swig. Take a swig and you go. That's it. It looks oh, like God. baby you shit. You, there's probably that in your belly already. Don't say Perfect. that. Dear Lord. I okay. hate this. I hate this. This is for you too, guys. Do both. I have to just chug it. <laughs> Plugging your nose. I don't know. It smells really do bad. Do you want me to go first, Jake? Do you want me to go first? Do do you want me to go I'm, first? I'm gonna to try go to do first? it. I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to do it. I can it. if you want. Okay, 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 okay. Got to build it. Got to build it up in your in your head. I was gagging execute. too much. Just execute. Clap. So he's got to do it. Clap. So he's got to do it. Clap. So he's got to do it. There he is. What oh, a champ! Yeah. What a champ! Oh, come on, a little bit more. You're almost done. You're almost done. <laughs> it's sweet and savory. No. Well, it would have if you had chocolate milk. All right. I can't do the last <laughs> um, bit. Continue. I can't do it. There you go. It's yeah. so chunky. You got to. You have to. It's so no, chunky. you don't. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> Come on. There it is. Oh, finish that chunky <gasps> there. Yeah. <gasps> yummy, okay. yummy, yummy. This is uh. Ooh. This is Crystal Bullets. All right, you have thirty seconds. This is, starting th- now. This is Crystal Bullets by White Denim. They're a indie rock band from Austin, Texas. Brand new release. Let's go. <laughs> Just being compromised Making contact 
slipping away, making contact with the sea. Wow. There you go. No harm done. Great work. All right, Hunter. Let's get a nice uh, chug going. My stomach is turning already. Oh, yeah. Get that mayo and choco in there. Yeah, get that mayo. Good chug. Solid. <coughs> you have 30 seconds. Hey, everybody. This is Ariel Posen um, from Winnipeg, Winnipeg, uh, Winnipeg Manitoba, singer-songwriter, renowned guitarist, produced solo artist. This is uh, Mile... Uh, hold on. The song is called Tumble Away. And it's uh, it's really good. Should I take a listen. like to do the uh, tahini beer no. chocolate milk no. mayo challenge at home send in a video to your friends at Servant Sonic at uh, Servant Sonic on Instagram or Twitter how you doing guys? I hate you dude I love you and I hate right. you okay. I hated that please no please All never right. again or I, might, I might have to vote to, we, we moved to physical challenges cause oh look I can't originally originally it was gonna be worse but, uh, but <laughs> Jake's Tahini beer mixture looked quite disgusting. I should have so, done fruit uh, so I took, punch. I should have fruit. I took another. Yeah, maybe you should have. I took another another chunk of it out, so it was just a, a beverage drink. Yeah, at least at, that point. at least he was a little a, a little merciful. Oh God! Yeah, there you go. But this is the start of a new combat rock season. So folks, go vote. When the episode drops, you can go hit <sighs> us up on Instagram at Servin Sonic. No G on that Servin at Servin no Sonic to let your voice be heard. Absolutely zero G. Um, and yeah, you can you can be a part of the uh, of the Servin Sonic community and uh, the Combat Rock decision. Uh-huh. So there you go. Uh-huh. Decisions. Mm-hmm. So wait, what's the track awesome, that's going to take well, us there out? Now we're... Uh, it's the last last Combat Mark, Rock uh, winner, Mark which, Rubier. Uh, yeah, Mark Rebele and uh, and the Count, Toronto Zone, right. the Count. Um, so yeah, guys, we're YouTube famous. It's official. We're uh, we're we're the hot commodity on YouTube these days. Could you could you have foreseen such a thing? Not me. I couldn't have seen this coming. So, but of course, the people demanded it. The people wanted it. So. <laughs> Nothing, eh? You guys, your no, souls are crushed. Just, okay, fantastic. We're just in shock. Good. Awesome. Tummy well, uh, uh, that, uh, that's where we're going to park it then. Yeah, your tummy hurts. Go get it, Tums. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say goodbye for now, folks. We're going to try and have a new episode every week, uh, whether it be uh, on YouTube or just on, on your podcast, your favorite podcasting service. Uh, we've got these new things called bite size breakdowns. I know Hunter's got Yo, one coming. We just we got one released cooking. one. Yeah, we've got one cooking. Uh, we just released one a couple of days ago where we covered uh, Silk Sonic, yep. the new offering from Anderson Pack and Bruno Mars. We got hell the new, yeah. We got some new new ones coming up with Hunter as well. So uh, we will try and keep those pumping out for you guys. And hopefully we have uh, another episode coming for you guys soon. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're new to the Servant Sonic experience. I hope it was everything you dreamed it would be. Uh, and if you're still coming back after all this time, incredible. It's truly incredible. We've gotten to the lowest of the low where we're literally drinking tahini on camera. So uh, it's uh, it's a miracle that you're still with us. But thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, in the meantime, if you guys have nothing else you need to say or want to say or if you have no will to live... 
No. Okay. Uh, then we will say, hey, keep it sleazy and take it easy. All right. Have a great day. missed opportunity What's that because we had a f- an actual french speaking artist and we didn't we didn't speak french at all not once on the episode we'll get there which is something we're so good at well shit yeah we'll get there fuck bonjour Maybe the last time pump we'll moose next one biblioteca <laughs> won't be the last time i pomp moose <laughs>